Welcome to a little tea time. Y'all ready? Welcome to a little tea time. Oh yeah. Welcome to a little tea time. Who listen? Welcome to a little tea time. All right. Welcome to a little time. Welcome to a little. Welcome to a little. Welcome to a little. Welcome to a little tea time. Welcome to a little tea time. All right, y'all. So good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It is I, Jarek, aka Jarius D, your favorite published author's favorite published author. And it is a little tea time. All right. So um I am excited about tonight's show because I have been dying to get this man on my show. And now I have the opportunity to have him here. I wonder if he's out there watching. Let me see if I can get him in. Okay. Let's see. All right, there he is. I think he's out there. I think he's out there. Okay. Let me try it again. Next person, right? Yep. Okay, run. Run, run. It's saying that it's not able to add you. So. We're going to try this one more time. Couldn't add guess This person was unable to join because of technical difficulties. Hey, Run, are you watching on your laptop, on your cell phone? How are you tuning in? I see that you are viewing. I'm having a little technical difficulties to try and add you to the live. Oh, <clears throat> iPad. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and it's not letting me add you to the live. It's not letting me add you to the live. Um, try now. Okay. We're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. Okay. I just tried again and it did not let me add it. This is so embarrassing. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. I I I thank y'all for tuning in. I log off my app high and use my phone. Cool beans. Um, in the meantime, I thank y'all for tuning in to a little tea time tonight. Um, we are having some technical difficulties, but we are going to continue to keep the show moving until my guest gets back. Um, so it is Friday and it is St. Patrick's Day. So shout out to all of my St. Patrick's Day viewers around the world watching tonight. If you are of Ireland or Irish descent, welcome to A Love Tea Time. Thank y'all for tuning in and for being here with us. Um, I'm excited about the weekend. I hope that y'all are as well. So, I gotta send a shout out to Shreveport Green handing out trees today. I saw y'all on the news and I gotta send a shout out to my team. I miss you guys. And um, y'all are just doing fantastic work and I'm just so amazed by what y'all are doing and continue to do the work continue to do the work you guys um also 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 i got a host a host a host of announcements to share with y'all but i will be saving that for the end of tonight's show so if you are tuning in tonight you definitely do not want to miss all of the tea that i have spilled 
from their uh, gain of events that are set to take place this weekend. And y'all do not want to miss those, all right? Um, Got to send a shout out to all of my viewers tonight tuning in, to everybody who's tuning in. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. It, this show is nothing without y'all. This show is nothing without y'all. To everyone who gets an opportunity to see the show, wherever you are, and no matter what you're doing. Got it? Yes, sir. We're here. All right. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. I, I think I was logged on to too many units or something, so I, I just unhooked the rest of the stuff. How's it going? It's good. It's good. It's Friday, so we made it. All right. So, Mr. Ron Smith, artist extraordinaire, welcome to a little tea time, finally. <laughs> you know what's crazy is because I know you've asked me a couple of times to do this, and we just finally made time. Uh, <laughs> let's get it done. So, I, I appreciate you uh, offering me this uh this space, man. I mean, cause uh, this is what our, that's what artists need, the exposure. So this is a great way to do it. So I appreciate it, not just for me, but for the other people too, cause I watched Connie last week too. So yeah. Cool. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we're just gonna dive in cause I'm excited. Well, before we dive in, okay. I'm gonna tell people how I formally met you. Um, you were doing an event at I want to say the Shreveport Convention Center, not the Shreveport Convention Center, at Hilton. Hilton, yeah, Hilton, yeah. And, and they were doing an, an art exhibit that featured your work. Right, right. At the Hilton. Yeah. So I'm walking around eating all this fancy food and drinking all these fancy drinks, and I'm still like, who's the person that's responsible for the art? Yeah. Ran it to you. That was a and I was like, that was a special night, special night. You know, it, it's uh, the Hilton, the local Hilton here in Shreveport, the manager is actually from from this area. So she's really big on supporting local artists. So she made sure that the art in the Hilton downtown reflects the community uh, of creatives, you know. So uh, at that time they were doing these shows, these rotating shows where they'd have an artist uh, every 30 days or so. So we, we, had, we had an open, art exhibit, you know, in the in the lobby, in the foyer, and people walked through and saw the art and, you know, we had an opportunity to get uh, get new new collectors, new people with their eyes on our work. So uh, thank you to the Hilton and actually Marianne McConaughey for uh, giving us local artists to, you know, that, that opportunity. So yeah, the yeah. Hilton project was big, but, you know, uh, bigger than that was the Hilton painting that I did, that the commission I did. That's, that's a seven foot by seven foot piece. When people walk in the door, that's what they see. So that kind of actually served as a springboard for me to not to just do larger pieces, but to get the exposure that uh, that helped with my exposure mm -hmm. to to say, hey, you do something that big, or honestly, you do something that style, because everybody knows I do these total totally different styles, you know, yes. and in, uh, in rural and abstract. So, yes. I, I I was was amazed. I was like, wait, there's a black artist who did this? Where is he? <laughs> and it was such a that was a great event that night. Very great event that night. Um funny thing happened and I'm gonna share it here because y'all didn't know, but I had on these um polo boots that night and the heel on the bottom of my shoe, it had completely broke off. <laughs> So if y'all could imagine, I was sliding one of my feet <laughs> off the floor <laughs> Man. during the event. It was hilarious. And um, I think her name is Alexandra. She worked there. And she was I, I, she was the only person I told. She was like, I wouldn't have known if you wouldn't have told me. Just lied, bro. Just lied. Okay. It was hilarious. But I had a great time. And now that I finally got you here, Finally got you here. I have to thank you because you were also one of my um, participants for my giveaway. You also gave some of your artwork to be um, given off in the giveaway. And I just got to thank you again for that. 
that that was a great way for me to start my year. So I appreciate that. That's an honor. That's an honor. I, I think, Jared, what, what we fail to uh, remember sometimes is I operate, this is just me personally, uh, people hear me say a lot, as for me, because I don't want to, you know, infuse what I think or what I thought or how I feel on other people. So that that's an opportunity for me to give. And I live under the premise that I don't give to get. I actually get to give. And when that happens, I think it organically can reflect itself in the community. Because uh, my art is bigger than me. It, it's not just what I do, what I paint. It's the people I meet and uh, the lives I change just from telling my story. So uh, my, my art is just a catalyst for me to, uh, to just get the exposure artistically, but also to share the story of how I got to this point. Because as you know, as you well know, it was a pretty arduous journey, journey to get back to art because I didn't, you know, I didn't paint for over 29 years. I just started back about seven and a half years ago. So uh, after breaking both of my wrists on a motorcycle, that that kind of, kind of stopped some things. But I was only doing graphic design anyway. So graphic design stopped and uh, thankful I, I had a job at the time at the post office. Most people don't know I worked 13 years, 10 months, uh, eight days, 22 minutes, and 18 seconds at the post office. <laughs> but, right. uh, I, I had some great, I had some great coworkers, uh, but it was just a springboard to me because I, I gained a great community of friends there, and some of those same friends now follow me uh, in my art life. So I'm thankful for that, you know. Yes, sir. Well, that's a great way to get into this first question. Tell my viewers a little about yourself. Uh, I was born the son of a sharecropper. Most most people think that's a joke, but I actually uh, am, because that's what George Jefferson in his spiel all the time said. I was born the son of a sharecropper. Mm -hmm. I actually was. Uh, my, my, my dad was a sharecropper. My mom was always a cook, and she drove a bus uh, in the small town of Belcher, Louisiana, just north of Shreveport. So uh, oldest of eight children, uh, four boys, four girls. Uh, I'm, I'm 62 now. My baby sister is actually on her way to town. She's 39, so there's a 23-year difference between my sister and I. So uh, I'm actually old enough to be my sister's dad. But 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 my mom uh, and my dad work. I mean, they work really hard. Uh, dad only went to uh, the sixth grade, and he had to go to work. I mean, that's but that's what you did in the rural area, especially in North Louisiana. If you want to farm, sharecropping, that's what you did. You know, so they they did what they needed to do to help us to become who we are. So I'm thankful for my humble beginnings because it makes me appreciate uh, who I am, where I am, and also where I'm going. So uh, yeah, son of a sharecropper. Yes, sir. So when you are not doing your art, what do you do for fun? OK. I love golf, even though I don't play much. Uh, I, I really do love golf. I love hanging out with my cousins, my uncles. I have some uncles that are very close in age to me. My roommate in college is my uncle, uh, my uncle George. He and I are the same age. <laughs> so uh, my mom was one of 12. So uh, my I have three siblings, uh, myself and my sister and my brother. We're all the same age as our aunties and our uncles. So uh, for fun, I, I love hanging out with family. But golf, because I I do two different things artistically. I must, I'm still doing graphic design during the day and I paint at night. So sometimes fun for me is in the studio where I am now and uh, kind of put some things together. Uh, so I, I, spend, I spend a lot of time in here uh, just kind of maneuvering and making sure I'm getting ready for the next show. But if I had to say my favorite thing, it used to be basketball. I'm a little older now, but I, I, I do love golf. I really do love golf. I love bowling. I don't do that much anymore. Uh, when my uncle kept getting me out on the on the lake, I actually do like fishing. Okay. But if they're not biting, take me home. Because <laughs> I want to catch. I want to catch, you know. So uh, I, I do like fishing, too. So I'm kind of sometimes all over the place. Because as you know, well, some of the people in this room might not know, I play drums also. So uh, being in that cage on Sundays, that drum cage, that's my that's my real peace. That's where I find the most peace. So uh, drumming is not what I do for fun. It's what I do for service. It's, it's my reasonable service. So yeah, I, I, I put that up there. Because that's how I went to college, was on a drum music scholarship. I played drums. But I didn't play drums for 29 years either. I just started back. 
I started painting and playing drums again in the same year when I thought I'd never paint or play drums again. So, but I had people, I've always had people in my life. God has always uh, shown me favor uh, in the way that he just put people in my path in my life that actually could encourage and inspire and, uh, and just support me, friends, family alike, you know, uh, some of my, some of my family members are my best collectors. Then I have a friend of mine who's also my partner. He's my largest collector, uh, Jason Maggio. He owns 15 pieces. And my house, I mean, his house looks like a gallery with my stuff. So uh, I've, just, I've just been blessed to be, be able to have people in my life that will, that will just pour into me. Not because I'm that great or that, they just, they just want to support whatever it is I do. If I was selling this paper board over here and I said, I, I need this, they would buy it. You know, so I'm thankful for that. I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, we come from the same place. Yeah. I have three brothers and four sisters. I'm the oldest of eight also. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so I, I totally get the dynamic. Yeah. And when I tell you one of my sisters, three of my sisters, three of my sisters, but one of my sisters, I'm very close with her. And she supports me no matter what it is I'm doing. Shout out to my sis Raven and my other sister Amber. Um, they they really do support what I do, and it makes me value this more when you realize your family got your back. Right, man. That's, that's big. That's big. It um, makes you go hard. My, my sister, that's two years younger than me, just bought a piece last week because mm -hmm. she loves her brother. And, and she likes my abstract work. Ironically, we both grew up in this rural area, but she's only bought abstract work. She probably owns about, now about six or seven pieces. Yes. Then my baby sister was on the way. I, I did a commission for her house and uh, she lives in Texas and it's three foot by, uh, by four foot. So she, so she supports me too. You know, I just, it's just good to have people that you know that genuinely love you to come out and support you. It just means more. It just means more when they when they connect with you and like you know what i'm gonna support you because my friends and family still in belcher they still some of those people still call me punchy so that's that's what that's what they still call me up there don't ask me where it came from i, I do not know and all i know is uh i still have people that call me punchy yeah yes sir i will not ask you where that came from <laughs> i don't know i'm serious jerry i really don't know i, I got you no, no. Okay, the, the next question is, what inspired you to develop your idea to be an artist? I always thought I could draw. When I was seven years old, all I did was draw, because uh, my dad was on the farm. I drew crop dusters and tractors. That's mm -hmm. all I saw. And I was seven years old drawing the same thing every day. I would finish my homework in class so I could draw. So it started when I was seven, I was just drawing. And then my teacher in junior high school, he was an abstract artist. He's my band director and my teacher, but he did all abstract and he showed me the lettering I used. I, I write a lot like an architect because of him, but he was my first art inspiration um, at Herndon Junior High. Back in the day, it was not Herndon Mac, it was Herndon Junior High. Okay. So at, at 10 years old, when I started playing drums, he taught me how to play drums. and. He was my first real, uh, uh, you know, influence on that side. Uh, just, but strictly abstract. I didn't do a lot of, a lot of abstract, but I appreciate it because I would go to his house and I would see some of these things. I'm like, oh my gosh, what, what is that? But I could appreciate the shapes and the colors. And uh, yeah, Mr. Till McKeough, I actually, when he passed uh, three years ago, I think, his daughter gave me uh, my favorite piece of his that he had done, and it's probably four feet by six feet. And it, it's an anchor piece in my, in my studio. It'll be with me forever. And he did it in 1973. And it looks as fresh today as it did then. So that's 50 years ago that he did that. And I have it here hanging on my wall. It, it, it's my favorite piece of artwork in the whole world. Yeah, so yeah. on that side, it was him. But on the rural side, it was Mr. Henry Price, who's the president of Shreveport Regional Arts Council. He was more my influence in high school and he did realism so i took my my days on the farm and started doing realism watching him a lot so he yeah he was definitely my rural influence he and uh, uh tommy warren who were my teachers at herndon i mean at north cattle that's why i went to high school so early influences were were those 
three guys. Okay, so I, 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 I'm still trying to figure out what your aesthetic is. Me too. Because you have so many different styles of what you do. Could you explain just a little bit of your aesthetic to us? Uh, to me, as for me, as my phrase, the the rural aspect as to what I do and how I create had to do with how I was brought mm -hmm. up. And because of, uh, you know, you see the shotgun houses, the barns, and, you know, I just finished a new car in this old field. I'm used to seeing those old cars parked out in the grass overgrown. That is how I grew up. That's what I saw. And I can do that for so long and have to leave and go to this very expressive thing that I do uh, with abstract. So it offers me an opportunity to leave one genre and go to the other one without losing the feel for that one. But I, I listen to music every time I'm painting. So sometimes it depends on my mood and sometimes it depends on the project. But, but I bounce between, I have an abstract piece and a rural piece always going on at the same time. Uh, in case I come home and feel abstract, then I say, oh, I think I'm gonna work on that barn I'm doing, you know. Then sometimes like I'll start a, a mixed media piece, which generally centers around music. Uh, I'm, I love music. I cannot work without music. Uh, even when I'm doing graphic design, I don't work without music. It is a part of who I am. Uh, I used to sing in the choir. My, I come from a family of singers, musicians, but my mom, <laughs> my, my mom could sing. I'm sorry, my mom could sing. That's another level right there. Mm. But uh, I use my mixed media uh, generally to uh, to express my music, my music side. Uh, so you you'll see real sheets of music in my in my mixed media uh, pieces that actually like I just finished a piece. It had actual sheets of hymn music uh, that I collected. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, revival journals. He uh, he does these journals. He pulls it inside of the book out and he puts them to the side. So I asked him to save me the music. And uh, he uh, he does journals using covers of books and he had a bunch of hymnals and I have a stack of uh, hymns that I use in that to tell that story, whatever that is, because it's all about telling the story. So uh, I bounce around because I don't like one thing. I remember when I first started doing this, people they were saying, hey, you just need to do one style. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm not wired that way. Then now I hear people say, now I'm glad you do. Because the people who buy my rule stuff may not like abstract and vice versa. I do have some people that have bought both though. Uh, some people like both styles, but for the most part, I'll find people that really like rule or really like abstract. Then I have some people that only want to see the music. Mm -hmm. So it just depends. But I'm not trying to cover anything when I'm doing that. It's just my, it's how I express myself. Yeah. And, uh, it's generally not in one lane. Yep. Hey, preacher to the choir here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do know that. Yeah, you do. Preacher to the choir. Um, I'm reading the comments right now. Okay. And, and Wendy Glover says, Ron Smith, extremely anointed. Love that. One of my biggest support I've known Wendy for 30, 30 plus years, 35 years probably. I've known her for a while. I almost helped raise her. Anyway, she probably gonna laugh at that. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, Wendy's been a supporter of mine uh, coming to art exhibits. And that's the thing about art exhibits and, and going to art functions. I want I, I really want to stress the importance while I'm on here to make sure, you know, when, when you have an event, invite people. But when somebody else is having an event, go. please go if you can. Uh, it, it matters when we see, see another artist walk in the room and like, oh my gosh, you came. And sometimes it's just for a few minutes, but just to drop by and say hi. And you can't go to everything, but when you can make time to go, uh, go see other artists. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about other artists that do totally different things. And it could be, you know, spoken word, whatever, writing. It, it doesn't matter. It matters to the artists when we see people that we know and like mm -hmm. and love and, uh, and they walk in the room. So mm -hmm. I heard, uh, I think it was, uh, Pastor, I forgot his last name, from up on Martin Luther King years ago. He always would preach, to first have friends, you must first show yourself friendly. Mm -hmm. So that's, I try to live that way. I don't always get it right, but that's my goal, is try to, if I want to receive love, I need to show love. Yeah, I'm still learning. 
and I'm anti. And guess what? Jared, you be, I think I think I'm glad I'm glad you said that. I don't think it ever stops. I think we're we're in constant evolution. And and because we are, that gives us room to grow and to build and support and secure and to learn. I never want to stop learning. Because sometimes we get on there, well, I've been here on this earth for, for me for 62 years. And I just no, I still don't know everything. I still mess up. Mm -hmm. I still fall, and I tell my children all the time, my two boys are 34 and uh, 28, I say, listen, it's not how you fall, it's how you get up. And sometimes you, you actually do need those people to help you up, because sometimes we can't do this by ourselves. We cannot do this by ourselves. No. So I, I learned that with my motorcycle wreck, that, you know, that, uh, night, that was 1995, that uh, I had to count on people. Well, I was used to people counting on me because I'm the oldest, you know, I'm, I'm punchy, I'm doing this and I'm helping mom, helping dad. And I realized then, because my sister, literally, my sister Mona, uh, we call her Shay, she literally had to feed me. I couldn't even feed myself. I had wires, I mean, rods in my hand that mm. I couldn't even put a, put a spoon or a fork in. I learned to do that. But for the most part, it taught me uh, a level of humility that it, it um, you know, I'm glad uh, it hurt but it changed me for the better. I'm better because of it. Love that. Love that. Great segue into this next question. When did you decide to establish your brand in your company as an artist? Uh, goes back to evolving. Because uh, I had another logo a couple of years ago and I just changed it to my signature now. But because I come from marketing and graphic design, you know, I want, I want to say this to, to the people in the audience, especially those entrepreneurs, you are your brand. People, your logo is a symbol, because I'm a big logo person. That same convention center downtown I designed a logo for. I, I, I have logos all over the city, but those logos are just a part of the brand. At the end of the day, you are your brand. That's why you have to learn to talk to people, to express yourself, and to be organic about it. Once you tell the truth, there's no reason to tell a lie. And if, if, if the truth hurts, so be it. That's your tr you never have to change it. Tell your truth organically if you can and find out when to tell it. Sometimes there's some things you don't need to say in certain rooms. So uh, having a spirit of discernment and understanding and reading the room is important. Uh, years ago, you couldn't have asked me to do what we're doing now. I would not be talking to you. I said, look, go find somebody else because I don't want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn... Uh, uh, through the entrepreneurs class at uh, Shrek and my coach, uh, Rachel, she may be listening. Uh, you, you have to learn to talk and tell, tell people your story. Uh, Karen LeBeau, who's, who's the first person that ever Love said that. that to me. She's Love the first person to ever say that to me. And I, and I talked to her the other night in the entrepreneurs class and uh, I told it again and, and she texted me. She said, you, you, you're not gonna make me cry. But she said, Ron, the first time she saw me at uh, Southern University, my son and I had our father-son exhibit. She said, you did this? I said, yeah. Now she's coming from New Orleans into Shreveport and I've been here, but she didn't know I had just started painting. She said, you grew up like that? I said, yeah. She said, well, you, you got to tell people that. I said, why? People don't want to know that I grew up in that shotgun house. She said, yes, yes they do. She said, tell your story. Now she teases me, she says, now you tell your story better than I tell mine, you know, that kind of thing. But, but, but she, she is a supporter, a sister, a confidant. Uh, uh, Karen LeBeau has been there from day one. From day yes. One. Oh, yes. I love Karen. Yeah. Karen is like the big sister everybody should have. Yeah. She is the big sister everybody should have. And I just, I'm, I'm still in awe that I, I get to be in these spaces with y'all. Like, I'm just a little young kid coming into this scene that is already established within this community. Yeah. And I, I'm, I be in awe, y'all, when I come in these rooms and I see y'all. And I'm like, man, they, they doing good. Not just they, but we. Yeah. We are doing good. Yeah. And I'm still learning, like, continue to put yourself out there. Branding? I am a branding machine. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I love don't, don't, other people. Don't ever think that uh, just because of your age that we aren't learning from you. You know, I didn't I didn't schedule this live. Jared did. Without Jared, I'm not doing this. 
without Jared, I'm not getting this exposure tonight that that I uh, that I'm getting. You know, I, I want to change lives and change hearts and change minds and educate people on not just art, but on how different and the cultures are and how we perceive things. But without you, I'm not doing this. So as much as you uh, are, are in awe of that sometimes, I'm in awe of people who do what you do because I, I, I don't want to do what you do. So we have to do this together. So I'm thankful for you. So you mean a lot to uh, the arts community. So don't, don't ever sell yourself short on that. We appreciate you too, Jared. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. <laughs> do that, do that, do that, do that. I'm just gonna do it. Just doing my job. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's not something that I take for granted. Yeah. I don't take it for granted. This is season five of the show. Okay. And to to still be meeting beautiful people who are putting it down for the culture. Mm -hmm. I want to see us win. I want to see people win. Even if I don't, yeah. I want to see other people win. Because yeah. when one of us win, we all win. Yeah. And you said something that was profound. You just said something that was profound. And and I'm going to keep it to myself because it's mine now. If they ain't heard it, I heard it. And it's going in my pocket. Okay. But um, thank you because... I, I can be a little antisocial. I know I know a lot. I've seen a lot mm -hmm. at a young age, and now I'm just ah, I'm good. But I'll come yeah. by. Yeah. Um, but it y'all keep me on my toes because I swear there is not one time that I have not been amazed for each event I walked in. I just went into a um a consignment shop downtown. I just. Went to a consignment shop downtown and I think I seen like some of everybody's work in that consignment shop downtown. Yeah. Now I was like, what? You know, it's it's something that you mentioned downtown, okay? Not a lot of people know this, but I'm I'm of the age, I'm old enough to remember my first visit downtown. Oh. And I was gonna do this do uh during my show, the show I had a Southern and Agora. Uh, Agora had my abstract work and uh, Southern University had my rural work. And that was the night I did the show, the dual show. Uh, to my knowledge, nobody else had ever done that before. Had about 25 pieces in each, in each place. But those shows were to show how diverse we are. But also, it was a memory to me that not just two blocks ago, two blocks away from where we were. When my first time into Shreveport to go into town with my grandmother, I went into, it was called Woolworth at the time, and it was two floors, okay? So I'm getting ready to go into Woolworth to shop with my grandmother for the first time because Punchy and George, the two of us were with my grandmother, and I got ready to go in this store, and my grandmother snatched me back, Jarek. She said, no, Punchy, what are you doing? I said, you know, we're going in the store, right? She said, we're going down here. She said, white people shop up there. We shop down there. So that was like a, a, that big aha moment. But I'm living to tell that story. Most people think that's so long ago. And that's what we have to really learn to honor and, and to respect. And not, not the fact that anybody did anything to us today, but it will permeate society right now. It didn't just stop that it, right then. It's my first time in the town. I'm 9, 10, 11 years old. And I can't go shopping. And I remember this. Everything downstairs to me, it had, a, it had a little smell to it and it was dark and dingy and everything upstairs was light and bright. But that's where, that's where white people shop. So for us to be in an area, a downtown and just across the street, we had the monuments that eventually came down. So all of this stuff is always constantly shifting. We're constantly growing and I'm recognizing how important the story is because my story is going to be different than yours. But that doesn't mean I can't learn from you and you can't learn from me. Yes, and that's, and that's the most important thing is that, uh, like I said, I don't, I don't give to get, uh, I get to give. And that could be information. It could be the story, whatever. Thank that is. So you. I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. Because you. You, you're going you're gonna to have me over here shouting in a minute. <laughs> I'll shout out. I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> All right. We go down to the next question. Okay. How have your parties changed since you started the business of art? Uh, 
I, I've had to learn a lot on the fly because again, I still do graphic design during the day. And both of those uh, fields of, of, for that creative space for me is always shifting. People used to say, you know, they always recognize me as a graphic designer because for, you know, 25 years, that's what people knew I did. Now people are starting to say, you still do graphic design? Because they, I, I'm slowly transitioning to being more of a full-time artist, visual artist rather than am. I want to do graphic design when I feel like it and not because I have to. Right now I'm in a position and, 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 and you know, it's a blessing to be able to do both. So when one is slow, the other one kind of can pick up and then mm -hmm. that one does, it does that. So I'm, I'm, I need them both, but I enjoy them both. But l lately, I'm, I'm, you know, the last year or so, I've been kind of transitioning to more people thinking about me as that. So because the evolution of art is now uh, going to, you know, we're talking about NFTs and the whole crypto world and people buying digital assets and learning the banking part of Bitcoin and, you know, OpenSea and those things. So that's shifting. So I'm learning about that. At the same time, well, I'm still in the studio trying to create because some of my artwork now I'm preparing to go into the NFT space. I went early in about two years ago, but it was I didn't know enough about the market. So I, I go in the rooms now in Clubhouse and in Twitter just to sit and learn. And I even learned about art. I encourage all creatives to find a space in some of those platforms, not uh, not to just go sell your services or sell what you do, but to just go listen and learn about the professional part of that. Uh, not just telling your story, but writing your uh, artist statements and, and uh, doing your uh, resumes and posting on these sites and getting involved in the arts community because I would not be here had I not started getting involved. I used to just sit back and wait for things to happen until I realized I had to go and be in the room years ago we were not even invited in the room so so at least now if you invited please go please listen please sit because I, I tell people all the time you know if you want to get to know somebody the best way to do that if if you're uh, uh, if you're a believer even jesus knew who would betray him but guess where they were at the table some of my best learning experiences have been when I sit with people. So when you sit with people and you say, oh, I didn't know. Cause you can talk among food, a, 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 a plate of a little greens and cornbread and whatever, that's another story. And you can say things there you can't say in, in the midst of a of the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell the people that all the time, I tell people on the worship team uh, that I, I serve with, listen, if you wanna get to know me, it's it's cool to just sit in coffee, lunch, whatever. Sit with somebody, and that's the only way you're gonna get 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 really get ready to know them. Yes, to know them is to sit and sup with them. Sup with yes. somebody, it'll make a difference. Yes, sir. We call that kitchen table talk. There you go. Okay. That's that kitchen table yes. talk. Yes. If somebody ever having a conversation, you just, is going somewhere, just now that's the kitchen table talk. Yes. We'll have to put a pen in that for later. Oh. <laughs> that's how you shut that down. Yeah. Um, so I know that you are in your studio right now. Right. Do you kind of mind to give us a little tour? Uh, a little. Okay. So I'm just a little phone. Key. I want to uh, like this. Uh, this is a black piece. It's all black. I, I've been working in this black and white arena lately. So that piece is that, but then right next to it are these two pieces. This black one I just finished, the other one I just put beside it. Oh. Uh, but right next, but right over here, <laughs> let me let me switch. Can I turn this, Jared? I don't even know. Yes, sir. So look at this. I just sketched this out to start doing this barn, okay? But, but over here, I'm working on this. And that's told you about that that my teacher did. That's the piece that I'll always have in my studio. And that's a huge piece. Oh. So that's kind of uh, it's it's a real long space. It actually used to be a garage that the previous owner enclosed. So I made it my studio when I when I moved here. 
so it's kind of long and narrow, but I'm generally working in this circle from this piece to that piece, and I can just turn and walk to whatever. And this speaker is my Bluetooth. It's always my, my iPad is generally playing some music. So uh, that's kind of briefly it. That's really all. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of rearranging. I have to get some new shit up in here, too, because I haven't been here, but not even a year yet. So. Well, it looks like you've been there longer than a year. <laughs> I would have gave you 10, 15 looking around. Just, just been a year. Been a year. It'll be a year next month. Yeah, be next month. So. Oh. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. So, I know you've already just told us just a little bit of some of the things that you had to overcome on your journey. Um, mm -hmm. more broad question, uh, more specific question. What challenges did you overcome on your journey? It was it was really the motorcycle wreck. Uh, it it was a wreck that that shifted everything. Uh, and and art is uh, not an art is not an easy arena to work and make a living in. It's really it really is because you have to invest a lot of time, a lot of money, and then you. I think artists because we're natural introverts. I'm, I'm really a natural in, introvert. This is what I have to, this is what I do because it's it's what I'm called, called to do. Uh, my, my boys are total opposite. I have a son who's an artist. My my impression eight years ago was him living with me and going to uh, the uh, Digital Media Institute here. His name is Austin. Austin was going to school and he was drawing and painting every day. And that's, he was the first person to say, Dad, you should paint again. And I said, I oh, know, I don't want to paint again. He said, you should. So I told a friend of mine who I mentioned, uh, Henry Price, he, he said, really? I said, yeah, P, I think I want, I think I want to paint again. So I, I, I get a phone call the next day. He said, hey, hey, Punch, stop by the house. I'm like, for what? Just stop by the house. Price had br paint, brushes, and canvas for me. He said, here you go. You have no excuse. Uh, uh, so I have, I have so many layers of that, that, that the impression that, uh, those things that shifted my, my perspective. So when I started painting again, now, now I'm eight years later and I'm, I'm here. But I, I do spend a lot of time trying to listen and learn and watch what's going on in the arts market. Because as I'm building my brand, sometimes that's always evolving too because because uh, the art world is changing. How we deliver the goods. Some of it now it's going to digital. So do I want to do that or do you want to be a purist? Uh, find your market, uh, find your support. And, and and do that, but also do what makes you happy and not what always makes you money. Because I do want to make money at this, but I, I like my piece. I, I like doing what I like to do. Now, my commissions, I have to do. I just finished two commissions that in those two boxes back there. You, you see those round boxes? Yes, sir. Those are two three-foot by six-foot commissions that I just finished for the Hilton. That they haven't even, uh, they haven't even d delivered them yet. Then I have another uh, small one in there, and uh, I have to deliver to them too. I'm actually, I've designed this is my graphic design world. I've designed when you go to the Hilton and walk into that door, I've designed a template that they're going to put into the concrete. It's going to be, it'll reflect the culture of North Louisiana. So I'm, I'm excited when they pour the concrete and, and they do this, this embossing thing they're going to do. Uh, so that's my creative and my graphic design side working together. But those two paintings are centered around music. And those two music pieces are, are together. I painted them on the floor of my uh, of my studio. Together they were three feet by six. Uh, they were three feet by 12. So not four by 12. So they were, I'm like, it was like 48 square feet. I'm like, oh my gosh. It, it was three by 12, three by something. I was like, this is as big as a Hilton piece, square foot wise. Uh, so again, the Hilton is, been a, a, a big supporter of, of mine uh, and of this community uh, artistically to say, look, we want to invest in local art. And that's, uh, that's what they've done here locally. So yeah, it's, uh, I, I, need, I need to, but they'll be doing a, a grand opening. Uh, I worked, actually worked with another artist, Cadavian Baylor. Uh, I want him his, on my show. His, uh, oh, he, he'll, he'll probably be on there. He he will be or they will be unveiling the, the mural that he did. We so we did a, it was like a collaboration. But he did that part and I did this part, and his his uh, 
his mural up top. Shout out to Kadavian. Yes. When you see it in person, he's posted it, but it's nothing like seeing it. It's in the it's on the top floor of Hilton, and uh, I'm just proud of him. I'm I'm excited for people to see what what he's doing in his community. So it's to me, in '62, uh, it it's it's up on me to make sure that when I'm I'm gone, I would have left. Because if you look at my website, you'll say, "Remember, dream, and inspire." From day one, I've always had those three words. It, that's who I am. It, at the heart of me is to remember, to dream, and to inspire. I want to leave this place better than when I found it. Because if I don't, I've, I've done this uh, earth an injustice. So uh, that's how I work. That's it. That's why I do this show. That right there, what you just said, is the reason why I do this show. Yeah. That's it. That's why we appreciate you. Thank you. Oh. That's it. <laughs> Don't get no better than that. Next question. How do you define success? Hmm. There's a balance for me. Uh, I never put profit over people. Uh, because in the midst of that, it can disturb your peace. Like I mentioned, the drum uh, cage at church being my, that's my peaceful place. Uh, we, are, we are in a, a pickle globally about how we put profit over people because we, we don't value relationships anymore. Uh, at the heart of me is about the relationships. Uh, and if, if, I, if I can't maintain relationships, then you won't make everybody happy. You can't, that's impossible. Can you promote how to say in school? Yes. So, so people not talking about you may may not be a good thing. So it's okay. Could be good or bad. But uh, I, I have a community of people here locally that uh, that support me wholeheartedly. But I do want to expand it other other areas. I uh, uh, the company out of New Orleans uh, is they're the company that commissioned me, got me to do a commission for the local Ashina Hospital. I, I did a three three uh, four foot by four foot panels for the local Ashina Hospital because of them. Now with that community, I'm able to get commercial projects that I may not be able to even have participated in had it not been for them. So you so you need people. You, I cannot do this by myself. I, I don't, I, I can't do this without you and, and, and Kadavian and Karen and the Prices and Austin and Phillips and my sister who's on the way and my other sister who's one of my collectors. And I won't leave my dad because it's, it's just so many people. Uh, uh, my 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 teacher's daughter who gave, gave me that piece, I told him about this thing tonight. She'll probably watch it later. She gave me that piece and I just I did a piece for she and her husband that's three foot by three by four. All she did was send me a picture of her kitchen. And when she she sent me the picture and the colors, boom. I shipped that to them and they they both loved it. And it's it's in their home now. So I have pieces all over from from Virginia, uh, uh, Sharon Jones, a uh, classmate. Sharon owns about five pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. My cousin, uh, Fairfax, Linda, Linda and her husband, they own about four or five pieces. So I'm, I'm, just, I'm just blessed to have people who've supported me from day one and they are all over. Henry Price, as I just mentioned, he was a, my first collector. He owns about eight pieces. The Buffin family up in North Shreveport, they own about five pieces and their daughters on about five or six pieces. <laughs> so I, I just have people, I have people that have been there, you know, so those are the ones that really, the, the Buffins and Mr. Price, Henry Price, uh, Pat Visor, uh, who's also my business partner, they were my early, early supporters. They bought artwork. Then I have a piece in Florida. The first piece I did uh, with the uh, fist on it, I had a, you, you've never seen it because I sold it before anybody saw it, had a fist and an actual cross made out of wire in it. And a friend of mine who's a gymnast, uh, Kathy Johnson is a gymnast of members from the 76 Olympics. She saw it and bought it. So of all the things, I would never think Kathy Johnson, a middle-aged white woman would be buying something that represented that because it was, she, she was, she was supporting the movement the BLM movement, when it was thriving and saying, look, we need to address 
the, the racial issue, the discord, what's going on with that. So she bought one and another collector of mine, Annie Mills, middle-aged white woman, bought another piece that mirrored that one. So the people that I really wanted those pieces to impact were the two people that bought them. And I haven't yeah. seen Kathy in years, but we connected uh, on Facebook and I forgot this. And again, th th it's the story. Kathy was in Belcher training. The training center for the Olympics it used to be in Belcher. It was called the Olympia Manor. I was a little black kid working at the local, local grocery store where my grandfather worked. And when he passed, they hired me, right? I said, you know, just pay homage to my grandma, grandfather. We all let Punchy work here. So I worked there and I got to know Kathy there. Uh, and I saw all these gymnasts all the time coming in and out of the store. But Kathy told the story of the time they wanted Punchy to come and participate in the end of year party. Cause I, I befriended them and everybody's there was my friend. But Jer, you know what happened? When Kathy asked if Punchy could come? Now she's not my, she, we had no connection. No, we, we weren't a, a couple. We were just friends. They told her he can't come. We love him, but Punchy can't come because they were concerned about the parents of the gymnast finding out that this little black boy was going to come to this event. And she was so upset. She told, she said, well, I'm not going. <laughs> so she came to me. She said, Punchy, uh, I've been, uh, I asked him if you could come to the party. told me, no, I want to go. I said, Kathy, I get it. But I, I really do want you to go. I say, don't miss this. This is this is for you. This is not for me. I understand it. It's the time that we live in. And that was in 76, 77, 78, during that time. She and, did. Uh, Kathy yeah. went, but she went uh, reluctantly. And to this day, she posted last year of that happening. I had totally forgotten, but she didn't forget it, how that made her feel. Yeah. So those are the stories that people think are, are so long ago. I'm, I'm living to tell it. I'm living to tell the story of why I use that burlap on that canvas because my grandmother picked cotton. I do that in respect to her. But what I did, I took the canvas, added the burlap, and I made what's old, I made a brand new. So some of my, so, some of my uh, favorite pieces are the pieces I use burlap on the canvas with. But they all tell a story. They all tell a story. So I, I, don't, I don't even think you knew that. So anyway. No, sir. Powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Very powerful, powerful, powerful. Thank you. It, it's weird that we still have to have these conversations of race and color. Even my generation, yeah. we still are having these conversations because people have to understand it's still there. We still, yeah, it's, it's still there, you know. Well, but but the greatest thing that you said though is to have a conversation because we we tend to listen to to respond and not listen to comprehend, and there in lies the problem with fighting. That's where the fighting comes from, and we have to learn to listen to each other. I, I went to school with a, at North Carolina. We had a mixed group of people, but I was the I, I stuck out because I had friends from both sides. So this side they want me to have those colors. You know, excuse me. One of my one of my collectors is probably on here now. Uh, Tommy and his wife, Holly Dow. Tommy was one of my first friends at North Caddo, who I hung out with. And he's a white, white guy, but his family had stuff that I didn't have. But I also knew that, uh, that they just liked, they loved me for me. So I, I got exposure to do other things that maybe my siblings didn't get to do because of favor that I just had. I just, I just, I got along with almost everybody. Cause even in high school, I looked like I was about 12 years old. So I didn't, people like, you go to high school? Yes, I'm a senior, thank you. You know, that kind of thing. So thank you Lord for this. But anyway, yeah, but back then I didn't appreciate it. I appreciate it now, but uh, you know, I, I had people from all over, you know, the uh, Walter Tompkins and, and that family, that was a black family, but his family to me were more middle-aged and the Baker family and Belcher were more to me, uh, uh, middle, middle income I meant. Uh, so I saw the stuff and the things that they had, only to realize that in my later life, it's not when uh, uh, you have stuff, it's but it's when stuff have it, stuff has you that gets you in trouble. So at this later stage in life, I realize now I never needed stuff at all to complete me. I could have it and be fine, 
but it should never have me. So uh, art, art speaks to that. It's the evolution of that happening, my expression of that. So uh, that's why I still do the shot. Some people are, are probably put off by shotgun houses. I'm not, because at some point there was a lot, there was a lot of life. There were lives there. There were families there, and they meant something. So a lot of my shotgun houses would be surrounded with grass and something that's green and nothing that's dead, because there's still life in that frame. So mm -hmm. I try to bring those, those uh, what could be an abandoned house back to life just by me respecting it, honoring it enough to put it on canvas. So those stories don't die on the vine. Love that. Great segue to this next question. What's the best advice you can give someone thinking about starting a business or pursuing their dreams? Hmm. Wow. Wow. My, my favorite quote, and I don't want to be too far from this, and most of you may know this, it comes from Denzel Washington, and it talks about dreams. Uh, dreams without goals are just dreams. Gosh. And if you don't act on those dreams, I know it's not perfectly like that, it can fuel disappointment. So, so most mornings I wake up, I hit a button on my YouTube page and something inspirational comes up. And it's generally uh, uh, Denzel, Eric Thomas, uh, uh, Les Brown, uh, it could be Joyce Meyer, uh, T.D. Jakes. I listen to that to get me going. So I, I hear so much during the day. All I know is, for, for the most part, I am responsible for how I treat you and not how you treat me. My, uh, my sister Mona, I told her that years ago, and she said, I, I'm going tell you what my brother said. And she said it even today. And I bet I said that to her 20, 25 years ago. I'm responsible for how I treat you and how you treat me. I have to wake up. I have to deal with me. And it's something that my pastor, Danny Mitchell, said years ago. I have multiple things I live by. He said, uh, Bro Smith, pa Pastor Mitchell had this, this voice about him. He said, let me tell you something. He said, the he said, oh my gosh, I, I, I miss him. I, I really do miss him. I, I love him. He said, the trip you plan is rather the journey you take. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. That? Yeah. But we, we can't, we can't fall uh, sometimes without, uh, in, in, in failing, you, you can conquer fear, but on the other side of that, that fear is, is, is a tenacity that you can gain from getting up. And it's in that moment that you realize, though that was a fall. That's why I, when I'm talking to parents sometimes, we want to protect our kids from a fall when the fall is their best friend because then they can learn how to get up. We, we've learned so much about protecting our kids from something that we experience only to realize it worked to our benefit and it's actually working to the detriment. So when I broke my wrist, my story is this, those scars on my hand is a reminder that I could be gone just like that, Jerry. I don't have to be here, but obviously he has something else for me to do. He had, he had something for me to do on this side of the earth that I can tell this story that when I, when I, when I, when I went back to that spot where I had that motorcycle wreck and I'm not gonna cry, I said, man, I read. So I went back and I remember now when I flipped, I landed on my knees. I was in submission to something greater than me. Your purpose is always greater than your plan. People oh. say all the time, tell, tell, just, just tell God your plan. He, he'll laugh at you and he'll put you in your purpose. Right. So when I landed on my knees in that position only to look up, across the field, I, I remember where the, where the motorcycle landed. And about five feet from me was a wire, just on two rods in this old field, this empty field. If I had flipped one more time, Jerry, Jerry, I could have been gone. I could have been decapitated. But it's bigger than me. I had to live to tell the story. And that's why I'm here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and let you know once we get out of here, I'm gonna go and have a praise break. <laughs> All right, man. I'm gonna go and have a praise break because a lot of people don't know my story. Yeah. A lot of people don't know my story. So to hear your story, I'm going back to where my story. Yeah. And I'm not gonna share it okay. because I don't I don't wanna start channeling energy. Yeah. But um it's 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 a thing that when you realize what you went through mm -hmm. to get to where you, you are, yeah. it's not you that did the work. It's God that did the work through you. Yeah. And I say this as a young, um, a young man who understands when God wants your attention, he gonna get your attention. You got mine. <laughs> you got mine real young. I was nine years old when he got my attention. Yeah. But when he got my attention, he's always had it. Um, and I'm going to share, just so I could be transparent. Um, I was hit by a car oh. when I was nine years old. Wow. And I still have to drive down that very street and still have to relive it every single yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. But in it, I thank God because I was supposed to die that very day. I was supposed to die that very day. And now on this other side of it, I have such a different appreciation for my life. Mm -hmm. When I turned 19 and when I turned 29 and when yeah. I turned 39, yeah, it's yeah. going to all play again. And I'm going to be in that moment with God. I thank you for sparing my life. You kept yeah. me here. Now I'm living my purpose. Yeah. Now doing everything that people weren't even expecting to happen. Yeah. And when these things happen, it's it's us only doing what God called us to do. We got to live our purpose while we have the time. Yeah. When it's over, it's over. Yeah. So I. I, I appreciate this life so much now because I understand where I could have been at nine years old, where I could have been. Yeah. And now looking back, yeah. he had all these beautiful things in store for me. And now I get to share that with all y'all here tonight. <laughs> so I, I, I get it. Yeah. Those, them, those, those things that are supposed to be our tragedies, those aren't our tragedies, those are our testimonies. Yeah. They built us. They didn't break us. Yeah. What was supposed to take us out yeah. only took us up. Yeah. But I digress. I digress. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. We appreciate that. Thank yes, you, sir. All right. Yes, sir. This is it's just a different insight of who I am. And people finally, because people, they know me, but they don't know me. Yeah. So, kitchen table talk. There you go. Um, next question, and then we got a few questions left, and then we're going to play Candy or Corn. Okay. Tell me three things you like to see better in our community. Oh, wow. Because I'm still kind of old school, I think <laughs> there's, a, there's a connectivity I think we need. Uh, talking about this racial revision that we're we on now. And I think uh, back in the day, we had a council that kind of focused on that. We kind of left it alone because uh, people thought we were talking about race and that too much. I think, I think that the church is uh, primed to help that. I think the church has also been a part of the, the, the problem where we didn't address that because we were hiding our silos and our bungalows and our cliques. Uh, and I think I think that part of it can can be uh, helped the the, the connection because we are whole we're more alike than we are different we just don't know that if we learn to respect somebody else's life and their the life that they've lived we can understand that we really are more alike than we are different I, I'd like to see us connect better how that happens I'm not sure uh, Shreveport is not the bad city that they, uh, some people who live here think so because you can go to another city and the same people that live in those other cities will say something about that 
So I appreciate the size, the opportunity. I still want to do things outside of this market, uh, but I, I think this is a great place to live, work, and play. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get anywhere you want to in 20 minutes. Uh, that Other people can't do that. I mean, I know a friend of mine in Atlanta, he's 10 minutes from his house and it took him an hour to get home. So uh, I don't want that. Uh, uh, I, just just the economy as as a whole, I don't want to, I don't want I want our children to, uh, if they have to leave, that's fine. Sometimes you have to leave to learn, then come back and share that. I think sometimes that's creative because we think we need to hoard things and we don't, because my my creative process is different than somebody else's. So when somebody else has a style that somebody else likes, guess what I'm doing? I'm telling them about the other artist. That's what I that's what I'm trying to do by being that person and all the way you want to see that change you got to be the change you want to see yes john legend thought of that it's cool oh okay okay that too you know i don't i just i don't know where that came from i really don't i guess john legend but uh i, I encourage artists to to support each other all the time and you know go to those rooms and those spaces that you you think you can't go to because it really matters when you walk into a room uh uh just I just like to see our perception of, of who we are and where we are uh, in this in this community. I like to see that change, and and the only way you can do that is uh, to change minds. You have to change hearts. They are connected. You'll see in my bio sometimes the word heart. The part of the heart, the art part is 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 bold. It's there for a reason, because I think they are intertwined. Uh, I'm I'm connected to this. Mm -hmm. So as a man think it, so is he. So is she, and I think think the first thing that people uh, go. is your mind. So uh, anyway, <laughs> you still because <laughs> you I'm about to shout over here because <laughs> you're touching it. You, you're there. You're there. It's true though. Yeah. As artists, yeah. our work really does come from our heart. And it can be from the pain that you feel. It can be from the joy that you have. It can be for anything, and everything. Your pain, and your joy is different than mine. Exactly. I, I just need to respect that. You know that that's the problem with with history and what we know and what we don't know because so so much of what we've learned now in the last twenty years is stuff that was not in the books. So you, we have to learn on our own. And they say, well, I'm gonna have Black History Month. Well, until they put it in the books, we got to cut, you know, that kind of thing. So it's one of those things. My hope is one day we don't have to have it. But until it happens, guess what? We we live this process because we didn't we didn't pick this. It, it came to us that way. But we don't, we don't have to stay here. Again, it's not how you fall. It's how you get up. Yes. With that being said, final question. And this, this is the perfect segue to that question. What would be your wish for the next generation? that they share with each other. Share, when I say share, I mean, be transparent, kind of like what you said. The, the thing with tra transparency is, is it brings truth to the table in a way that nothing else will. Your, your transparency is not there for you, it's for the next generation. So you tell the truth and, and it, it will actually help everything and everybody in the future. Tell the truth. Be transparent. And well, and I, I have, I've had to learn that with my boys because so the way I grew up, I didn't grow up having a voice. Need to say, but now with the advent of uh, technology, you can just Google it and find out. So the kids have access. So we as adults have to adjust to that. And the best way to to do that is to tell the truth. I'm not saying don't have a discernment about it and when you tell it, because it's not always what you say. But it's how you say it. I can tell Jared, hey man, you know I love you. But I can say, hey Jared, you, you know I love you. It takes on a whole new light. So it's not always what you say, it's how you say it. Ooh, still learning that. Okay. Anyway, what's yeah. next? Oh, because <laughs> I, I, I can say some stuff. I just said some I saw stuff. Tabitha. My cousin Tabitha is here. She that's that's my girl. That's Tabitha. Yeah.
what did she say? I, I can't, I'm not finding. I'm she said, Hey, it. you say it. Hey, you, how you say it. How you say it. <laughs> watch this, watch this. Tab, you know, I love you, cuz. You know, <laughs> I can say, Tab, you know, I love you, cuz. <laughs> that's my, that's my problem. That's my problem. All right. Yeah. Here's my favorite part of this show. This is my favorite part of this show. We're about to play candy or corn. I'm gonna ask you if you'd eat these candies. You could say candy if you'd eat these candies, or you can say corn if you would not eat these candies. But I have to pick one, right? I have to pick one. Either candy or okay. corn. All right. First. Candy I eat, corn I don't. Right. <laughs> okay. Candy if you no, eat, okay. corn if you want. Okay. All right, first candy up, York's Peppermint Patty. Candy. 100 grand. Candy. Sneakers. Lord, candy. And I'm honestly, I'm not a big sweet eater, but anyway, go ahead. I don't eat a lot of desserts, so, but I'll, I'll do that. Go ahead. Got your next candy up is M&M's. Plain or peanut. Okay, never mind. Uh, your preference, your preference. Uh, candy, yeah. All right, next candy up is Mike and Ike's. Corn. Feel that, feel that. Next candy up, lemon heads. Candy, old school. That's all we had, and then, and then we had to we had to cut them in half. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, you have to cut them in half. <laughs> Look, I, my. My son said, my oldest son said one time, he's, he said, he told my sister, you mean we're poor? And my, my boys would always say words correct. So he didn't say poor. He said, you mean we poor? Because we would tell him how we used to have to separate our popsicles. We couldn't eat a whole popsicle. We had to break it in half. Okay, that's another story. Go that ahead. part. I know. That okay. part, because you just said to cut that the part. lemon hand in half. We used to fight over the lemon hand. <laughs> I'm not going to cut it in half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next candy up is the Twix. Candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> I just made right. it. Go ahead. Gotcha. The next candy up is Skittles. Candy. Sour Patch Kids. Corn. Well, my 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 jaw just tightened up. Go ahead. And and the final candy is. Okay, you froze. You see it? Final candy is candy corn. Man, Christmas candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's all we had. That's actually, when I, when I was growing up, that's all we had. We didn't have anything. I'm, I'm sorry, and peppermints that we broke in half. Go ahead. <laughs> Y'all with these broken down candies. <laughs> we couldn't have been friends. I'd be like, we I'm not sharing my candy. Yeah, we had to make do. It's all good. I would have drew the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have took a stand, yeah. not, not a candy. Look, your stand would be, well, you don't want it, that's your parents. Go to your room. Got it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not go to your room. Go to y'all's room because there's only yeah. one person in the room. That's true. You've been there too. Yeah. Well, Mr. Ron Smith, that is candy or corn. Thank you for playing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. Man. It's been good. All right. So tell people how can they follow you? Where can they find your work? Oh. And how can they get in contact with you? Uh, uh, you can always uh, follow me at Ron Smith Art on uh, Instagram, Ron Smith Art. Uh, I have a page, Ron Smith, uh, Facebook page. And my website is Ron Smith Artworks dot com ron smith artworks dot com you'll see you'll see my abstract my real pieces there and and with some uh with some merchandise there too i have some prints and things that i sell too uh but that's the best way to get in contact with me or you can email me at ron smith artworks at gmail.com yes i gotta thank you for coming through here tonight i feel like i have been blessed a thank you. Thank you, friend, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I, I cannot, I can't express it enough. I, I'm just humbly, 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 humbly grateful to have you here tonight. 
And you know what? I'm happy it took as long as it did because this was profile. <laughs> it's been, well, this was fun because you know I generally I'm, when you ask me I'm like oh I don't want to do this and I was like no it's not about you he's asked you to serve so this is my reasonable service to the people who have always loved and supported me from day one so again it's bigger than me thank you yes sir. I appreciate it all right I'm not gonna hold you I'll see you soon thank you, you. Will. at some event all right all right I right, take care. God bless you. You as well. All right, y'all. That was amazing tonight. Amazing, 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 amazing. That was a very amazing show tonight. Um, got to send shout outs to Mr. Ron Smith again for coming through tonight. So now, y'all know what we gotta do. We gotta spill this tea before we go. Um, the Villain and Friends St. Patty's Day weekend event is going down in Fort Worth, Texas at 8 o'clock p.m. at 425 Commerce Street. Gotta send a shout out to one of my friends, one of Shreveport's own local comedians, Mr. Mark Pugh Jr. is going to be appearing in this actual event so y'all go out if you're in the dallas fort worth area get out there to the villain and friends st patty's day ev weekend they will have mr corey cherry mr alexander k mr jj wood rush and miss ashley watson appearing on that program so y'all go out there have y'all some fun and celebrate with them um, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is 318 Day Festival here in Shreveport, Louisiana from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. at the Caddo Common Park, downtown Shreveport. The event is free and open to the public, so y'all do want to get out there and go have some fun with that. They do have the front cover band on deck to perform. They also have Dirty Red Band also appearing on stage shout out to mr eddie key who is going to be on the show as well shout out to max swan shout out to richard shout out to dj static and to q major the violinist who's all appearing on that set so y'all definitely don't want to miss that tomorrow right happening sunday the greens on the red at highland community garden at 520 Herndon Street, across from the Noel Methodist Church. It's going to be going down from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. on Sunday, so definitely do not want to miss that. If you are into gardening, this is an event that you do not want to miss. So definitely go and show your face in the place. Tuesday, March the 21st, which is my mother's birthday, coming up really soon. Happy birthday, Mom, in advance. Shout out to Mr. Q Major, who's said to do the Kallenberg Artist Tower Residency. He's going to be doing his own artist talk about his work as an artist. So you definitely definitely do not want to miss that. You can catch it on the Shreveport Regis Art Council fan, fan site um, for that actual interview as well. Uh, calling all Greeks, HBCU graduates, Masonic and Order of Eastern Stars, uh, Stomping Grounds T, Saturday, March the 25th, 2023 at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Holiday Inn Express, 5420 Interstate Drive in Shreveport, Louisiana. Come out and shout to you drop for that event, you guys. You do not want to miss it, all right? And finally, a uh, I gotta continue to send shout outs to Miss Sheree Gray of Lumpy Grace Artistry. Our play is coming up really soon, March the 25th and the 26th at 7 p.m. at the Shreveport Regis Art Council building where the big dog is on the corner of Crockett Street, 801 Crockett Street. I am excited about this play. Y'all saw the new photo that just went up today. Uh, I cannot wait to be in this play. And I cannot wait for y'all to come and see us in Measure for Measure. The tickets are available now on LGA Artistry. Look it up. 
get your tickets, all right? And I will have my tickets next week. So if y'all are interested in tickets, definitely come and get with me. Inbox me, hit me up, and we're going to set them tickets up, all right? Cool. Now, I would love to have you guys go and check out my books. The Coming Full Circle Brand. Available right now at Amazon.com. You can check out the revised edition and Coming Full Circle 2, Marriage, Money, and Mayhem. All available right now. You can also check out my book of poetry, Catching Up With Me. Also available right now. And I do not have my other book, The Confessions of a Conceited Drama King, because they are sold. But I do have Quarantine Quest here with me tonight. And it is also available as well at Amazon.com. And you can also check the books out at Agora Borealis at 421 Lake Street, downtown Shreveport. And shout out to Katie and the crew over there at Agora Borealis, right? You guys also check out a little tea time on youtube and on spotify if you miss any other shows right and be sure to check out grade a grub which is another show that i'm a part of which is also on youtube it's g-r-a-d-e-a-y-e-g-u-r-g-r-u-b sorry g-r-u-b and get into it over there on YouTube and have some fun with us on Great A Grub. Now, as I always say on this show, remember you matter. Let's build and go grow higher Shreveport. And as I say at every single show, remember to be great on purpose and not by accident. The future is now. I am Jarek, a.k.a. J.R.U.S.D., your host of A Little Tea Time and your favorite published author's favorite published author. Until next time, y'all have a great night. Be well and happy 318 Festival Day, Shreveport. Welcome to A Little Tea Time. Y'all ready? Welcome to A Little Tea Time. Oh, yeah. Welcome to A Little Tea Time. Who listen? Welcome to a little tea time. Alright. Welcome to a little hey. 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 Welcome to a little tea time. 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 Love you. Good night.